Good afternoon. This I'm Dr. Bill White. I'm a general dentist now, but I've been doing nothing but orthodontics and a good bit of TMJ mixed in with the orthodontics for the past 40 some odd years and did a lot of the orthodontics prior to that. But I'm going to uh, and I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society, which is a good place to go if you're a general or pediatric dentist and you want to really learn orthodontics. And I'll tell you, if you uh, pass the boards in the American Orthodontic Society, you will be able to do orthodontics. And I'm uh, board certified in that organization, plus the International Association. But enough about that. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about a case today that is really kind of uh, unusual this thing that happened. And it's a temporal mandibular disorder was caused not by doing the orthodontics, but by leaving the orthodontic appliances on the lower anterior teeth for they, they stayed on there actually 12 years after I got through with the case. It was a real deep bite case. And I was an intelligent lady. Uh, she was a school teacher. And I asked her how on earth she did that or why she wanted to. She said, well, I just got busy and they weren't bothering me. And I just left them alone. And she took care of them real good. And I'll show you what 12 years of brackets being on teeth or more than that actually. It was they were on there a while before we started this time, uh, and you can't hardly see where the brackets were in you know, on these teeth. But when the bite deepened again, it you know it was real deep to start. I'm gonna uh, go ahead here and let's just show you the case to start with, and I'll tell you about it as we go along here. It, it's a real interesting uh, case. Uh, the let me get this thing moving here. All right, this is just starting. Here is the lady. Now, this is after she had been out of braces since 1978 when she was a little girl. And she's, uh, this is 19, I think, 90 when we took this or else 93. We've got some later cases. I mean, the time that she came in. Uh, good facial height, everything straight. There's been no extractions or anything in this case. Uh, profile from the front looks fine, good. And now we've taken these brackets off so you don't see them now. But I'm going to go back and show you some pictures of that. Got a very nice smile and this has gone on since... We finished her case, I think, in somewhere in 1978 or maybe a little after that. Uh, okay, when she came in, she had a TMJ problem. And that's why she came back for me to look at it. And uh, these, these brackets had been in her mouth since 1978. And it is now 1990. Uh, when we took these pictures right here. So these brackets right here have been on this lady's mouth for at least 12 years or been in there 12 years longer than they really needed to be. And uh, let's look at the, I was concerned that the teeth would be uh, decayed or something around them. And, uh, I'll show you. She must have taken good care of her teeth. Uh, and uh, so we came back in and put this up and looked at it. There was no uh, decay around these teeth at all that we could uh, see. And we took these brackets off. Now what happened, she had this terrible deep bite when we started. I'll show you that. And the bite kind of relapsed a little. You can see these teeth have raised up some. Uh, it was uh, open better than that. And when it did, it relapsed a little. And these upper anterior teeth right in here on the lingual side came down and bumped these brackets right here. 
and this caused these this uh, steep inclined plane on the back of these teeth and as she it bit down on that it pushed this mandible back and she started coming down with a temporal mandibular joint problem and so this was they were on there in 1979 and it is 1990 right now and so we come in and take these brackets off and this is the TMJ problem so that's what it's so it wasn't caused by orthodontics it was just caused by orthodontic brackets but it's the same old ball game you you push the mandible back something starts sliding down this inclined plane either these teeth are going to go forward or the lower teeth are going to go crumple up or the mandible is going to go backwards or there will be a little bit of all three of those things happen right in there to cause the TMJ problem and then you've got to have somebody uh, a joint that's susceptible to pain like that and many many people are some of them though are tougher than a boot and you can just do whatever you want and they don't uh, have any problem with that but anyway she had the TMJ problem with those brackets that she'd been wearing those uh, on her teeth just thank God she took care of them good now here's the way the case started off this is in treatment I'll show you models of it prior to that we put this intruding wire here and this intruding wire goes way down like this we raise it up and hook it to that and it starts pushing down on the anterior teeth now to keep from opening the bite with that we put a critic blocks on these teeth back here and the patient chews a lot more and those teeth will hardly move at all but yet you'll force these anterior teeth down now if I was doing that today I'd put one of those on the upper too and just pick the things up there it's worked a lot faster uh, this was back in the early times of uh, when we were do, using that intruding arch but it is marvelous it will just open bite it'll open just during near anything you can uh, put it on I don't care how old they are or what, you know, it, it opens up. And if it's a case you don't want to increase the vertical height, you put blocks on them. And if you want to open it, you put a block in the front and nothing over these. And these teeth will over, they'll erupt toward one another quite a bit while you intrude the anterior teeth and you will increase the vertical height of the face. So you can use them to increase the vertical or use them to keep the vertical like it is and you can open almost any dental bite and not open them skeletally if you learn how to use these acrylic blocks now that's uh, not much to learn how to be able to handle a high angle case and it's got a deep dental bite and you have to open the bite dentally and you don't want to open it skeletally for sure or it gets looking worse so learn how to use these blocks they really help you out in coming out with a good looking uh, case a good looking face when you finish up the case all right here it is the upper we just had a we used a regular wire you know to do it we straightened it up with this little flexible wire and then put a reverse curve in there and picked it up with that which is a slow way to to level a bite okay here's the bottom this is 1990 now after we got this young lady back and she was biting and it hitting on this stuff down here and it was shoving the mandible back and that was causing temporal mandibular joint problem and putting a lot of force in the a lot of weight in the front you see and then when you take weight here then there's a lot of weight back at the back on the joints it loads the joints up so uh, that's a way to keep the joints keep these teeth in contact that helps keep the weight off of the joints okay we took that thing out but now here it is in 1979 
uh, when we were treating the case. You see, we had this intruding wire on here, and it was way down, raised it up, hooked it up here. And you have to get to keep the upper, uh, except this is a lower teeth up here. This is a mirror stuck in there some way or another. Uh, but you want to open your bite and have the bite opening go ahead of the straightening out of the lower anterior teeth right here. It's all right to straighten them if you go down with them and then straighten them, whether you don't bang into your upper teeth. Just try to keep away from that because you can cause a joint problem with that. Okay, here's the stuff rigged up. That's 1979, 2 of 79 in there. All right, here's 11 of 78. That's when we first saw this young lady. Now, this is a, you call it a class 2, division 2 uh, case, you see, because it's just end to end, but it's just almost class 1. Uh, but now you never take anything out on a case like this, you see. You, you're going to try to expand these teeth or raise them up and they'll go back out and you come down with these and they'll go out too and you'll have a lot more room in here and line these teeth up so you can watch that develop and look at it after you get through with it. All right here we go with the then I said to today I would put a uh, arch here and pick this up too at the same time we did this one going down there. All right, here's 1978. You look at it from the front, and you don't even see. I mean, these teeth meet out in front of your lower anterior teeth, and you don't see any teeth at all, except when you get back over around the laterals a little bit and the cuspids. Then, of course, it jumps up to the bias and the molars. And we're going to open this bite. Now, this deep bite cases tend to uh, deepen again when you get through with them. So you, we put a retainer with a bite plate, and she wore that retainer for years and years. I'll show it to you later on here. Okay, there's just with the bite open, but you see these blocks that she's chewing on. These blocks hit, and when you, if these things make you bite more than you normally would. If you don't think so, you just stick some on your teeth and see what you do. You will intrude the teeth. Uh, but you put them in here, and we put this intruding force on here. And as this, you raise this up, well, all this thing does is tend to pick these molars up because you're going to go down with these teeth and you've got just as much force going up with these teeth. And if you don't have something in there, you're going to elevate these teeth a certain amount. And you make the vertical height of the face greater in here. And if you got somebody that's too doggone high anyway, uh, that really messes up the looks of the face. They have an increased of the lower third of the face. The, you increase it, it makes it makes you look bad, really, uh, and you need to keep it down. So you can put these blocks on here and have the person chew against those blocks, you see. And now you can prize on that, and it'll make these teeth go down, and you won't elevate these teeth, the molar teeth at all in there. Uh, I've taken cases of high angle cases with a deep dental bite and open the dental bite and use these blocks and never increase the vertical height of the face doing that. If you don't believe that, just try it. It works. And if you don't, <laughs> still don't believe it, put some on your own blooming teeth and you'll see how much you chew on them. In other words, you're just using the musculature to keep from increasing the vertical height of that face. Now here you're looking at it from the side, see? Now this tooth needs to go in here and here and here. Uh, and as we come up with this, we're gonna, we're gonna 
as we elevate these teeth, they kind of rotate in here so the root goes back a little and the crown goes forward on it. And the same thing happens down on the, on the bottom teeth down there. But I'll tell you, when you free this mandible up, in the vast majority of them, the mandible will come forward. And your class two problem and frequently just goes away. or It's very easy to correct. Once you get these teeth out of the way, the class two is easy just to work with. It'll, it'll usually the little jaw will come out. In fact, one time I had a class two case, a deep bite. We opened it up, and I've been wondering if it didn't go into slight class three, and I had to use some class three elastics to correct it. Now, that doesn't happen very often, but it did happen to me one time. One time that it, it took place that one time. Uh, so, here we go again. Now, there's the view of the blocks. All right. Now, here is 19... This is 1990, 12 of 1990, uh, we're, and we've taken these brackets off of these teeth. Now, those brackets have been on those teeth for 12 years longer than they should have been, and you can hardly see where they, I can't even see down here at the bottom, they might you could say something happened down there, but not much at all. Uh, so brackets can stay on teeth if you keep them brushed properly. And these uh, uh, sealants and things we have these today are much better too. Okay. All right. There's the way the uppers were to start. Now we're going to change the whole uh, arch form here as we go. Now there's the lower. And you can see how it's kind of squished back. This is... 11 of 1980, I mean 78. All right, here it is, 12 of 1990. And here are those teeth. You can see you got a little, little decalcification on one or two of them here, but not very much. And those brackets have been in her mouth for 12, 13 years. If somebody wasn't taking care of their teeth, they'd be in terrible shape there. But why she did it, I do not know. All right, we put the retainer back. This is the same retainer we made for this lady, I think, in uh, 1980, I believe it was. Uh, and that's a class one relation. She's not probably not biting all the way back in here. Well, we may have put the, we have, don't have the retainer in there right now, anyway. All right, here is the retainer. And we don't put anything across the, the occlusal surface of these. These retainers will stay in. This is a bite plate that she's been, her lower anterior teeth have been closing up against it. And as long as she wears that thing, it bite will not deepen. But over a period of time, if you take them out, they're going to deepen to some extent right in there because these are taking weight all the time. And you take this out, they don't take weight unless they're contacting the upper anteriors. Uh, upper three to three bonded retainers are nice, but uh, you're not going to use those all the time. All right, here's the upper arch. And this is 1990. I'm going to show you some pictures of it in 93 here, and it's, it looks darn good, you know. And there's the lady, 1990. And that's another picture, 1990. Beautiful smile. And here's the cephalometrics on the lady. This is 1978 right here. And you can see the upper teeth come down past the lower. The lower teeth are way up in there somewhere. Uh, and the vertical height of the face is good. We keep the vertical height will be just about the same thing uh, when you get through, through the case. 
and here it is in 19, this is 1990, she's 25 years old now, and we've got the, the lower anterior teeth meeting the upper anterior teeth, just about enough overjet and overbite, it's doing good. The intelligent lady, she's a school teacher, and uh, I ask her, why on earth you left those blooming brackets in that long? And she said, well, I just got to doing some things, and I just was busy, and, and before you knew it, 12 years had gone by. Now, this is the first Panorex. This is number one. And this was taken in 1978, 10 of 78. She was 13 years and two months old at that, that point. And you see the upper teeth went down to here and the lower teeth went up to there somewhere. And this is an old Panorex. Showed that she was pretty much class one. It's just slightly class two, you know, in there. And I took use that old Panorex. I really like that thing. It told me a lot of stuff about the case. And here we are. This is uh, 1990. She's 25 years old now. And uh, bones good on the teeth, everything. The bite's open. And we've got just a little bit of overbite and overjet in here. It's pretty good. Maybe a little more than I needed. Now I'm going to look at the last one here that I have. I saw in 1993. And the teeth are like that. It's settled a little bit deeper than I would like for it to be. But it's doing good. And it's holding. And I'm sure it'll stay pretty much like that because you're chewing to the back of your upper anteriors here. And... Uh, you make a kind of a table there to bite on. It'd be good if you had a fixed uh, appliance that they're not going to wear a removable deal. So there we are. Now here it is in 93. This was with a retainer. And we've had this retainer. Or she's had it since 1980. And the retainers just don't wear out much. And there it is again. There it is again. And there are the, the teeth in 1993. So this will help you kind of understand some of the things that cause the jaw to hurt. And the, the vast majority of the pain with the joint is caused to some extent by distal pressure on the mandible. Now, stress has a big effect on it. I've had people I could not get their pain settled down until they, that one lady had to change job, hurt her boss were just at each other's throat all the time. And I could never get her uh, pain free, you see, to do that. So that happens sometimes, but the vast majority of them are caused by uh, just distal driving the mandible. And there is this retainer, and that retainer was made in 1980, and here it is, 93. So it's been used for 13 years, and it's still working. So there's no need of getting rid of it. And I think that's the last picture in this uh, video. And I hope you learned a few things about it. I appreciate you watching. And we've got a ton of these videos. I don't know. Uh, it's better than writing a book, though. So I'm going to stop the deal at this point.